Good afternoon, everybody. We have the founder of the famous blue bottle, Moscato Dasky. No, well, before the blue bottle. Before the blue bottle. Yeah, the blue bottle. Tell, came. Us. Tell us the story. The blue bottle was later. Okay. Originally, Moscato Diasti, the wine, was not allowed in the United States due to the alcohol percentage. And I uh, met a gentleman in, in by show in Verona. The wine was not kosher. And uh, I sipped it. You let us sip it, you know, and spit it out. So says my love. Or he didn't say that. <laughs> no. The truth is that you're allowed to spit it out. Anyway, when I tasted it, I said that this is what the Jews need. Jews can't drink four cups of wine. You always got had headaches. But go tell it. So I go tell this guy that uh, I want to make it kosher. He knew that Jews, but and he knew Jews had money and kosher. So there was something to talk about, but he didn't know what kosher meant. And I started explaining to him that kosher is uh, what the Jews drink. And in order to make it kosher, you have to... So he says, how do you make... What is this kosher? So I say, you have to... There's a lot of work that goes into your winery, and we have to change... Only Jews can produce the wine. And he didn't understand that for nothing. It just didn't... They should touch... Only Jews can make my wine, can touch my machines... So he took out a hundred dollars and gave it to me. He says, "Yeah, take a hundred dollars, go home." <laughs> That's what he did. He took out a hundred dollars. Few ends of the take, go home, go. Home. And he didn't say that. Actually, it was very. We were very friendly. That night, I met him. I chased him. I met him for dinner that night in Verona, and I told him he was very nice. He asked me what I'm eating, so I said, "I can't eat just like I can't eat here, just like I can't drink your wine." But this wine is going to sell to all the Jews in America. And I was convinced that it would, and it did. Now, uh, he wasn't pro. He was happy to get rid of me. At that point, part-time, part-time, I was writing for the Jewish press. They did me a favor, because I used to write for the newspapers. And I used, the deal was, I wrote for the newspapers, provided that they threw all the old Kedem wine. You can put that in, leave that in there. <laughs> no, no. I used to write for newspapers. I used to write. And uh, when I came back to America, I wrote a whole article about this beauty, and it was beautiful. It was in Mont Monferrato. It was gorgeous. It was on the mountains where they make these grapes. These are in the Piemonte. And a lot of Jews made wine in that area years ago. And I took that article and I sent it to him. Oh, Yemot Zachirat Anders. Now he's in the newspapers already. And I wrote all about him. Batasaliolo, and that, and And I flew right back to Italy. And then we were talking. So he tells me, tell me exactly what you want me to do. So I told him, I want you to do nothing. I want you to stay away from the winery. Just direct my people what to do. But you cannot touch anything that goes on in the winery. I saw him sweating, but on the other hand, he smelled money over here. He, smart guy. And we went at it. I took two mashgichen, the best. To Gabriel Zinner and Chaiken. Rav Chaiken from Bar. And the Ashkacha was me'ule, like they say in the Hebrew. Now, and we came out with this, and we made it kosher. And it wasn't so difficult. He was scared. You know, his machines run millions of dollars over there. And we became best of friends. That, he says... So what's the name Bartonura? What Bartonura was before. Bartonura, we came in with Bartonura. Oh, so that was with Gershon Mendel. Bartonura. That was with Gershon Mendel. The wine started out with Gershon Mendel. So it's called Bartonura Mascada? Uh, originally, no, no, it was Rashi. It's called Rashi. Yeah, the wine originally the wine. The name of the company was Bartonura, uh -huh. and then we changed it to Rashi. Then Kedem Ked took over Bartonura. You can cut these things, right? Yeah. Anyway, we bought in. I, I convinced him. I knew. I knew the business. I understood the business that 
he's going to sell the least amount that he's going to sell for the following year was 3,000 cases. He's a smart guy. He says, if you think that you're going to sell 3,000, that's not so. You'll sell six. If something can sell three, they sell six. Three is a bad number in the wine industry. That's cheap. The wine sold 10,000 cases that year. Luckily, he made enough wine. And it became the number one selling wine in kosher, in kosher wine. But beforehand, it was never even allowed in America as kosher, as non-kosher. I had to fight with the, with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearm to change it around. And if you check on the bottle of, Bart of the Moscato, it does not say wine. There was, there's nowhere that it says wine on that bottle. It doesn't look like milk. So it was a natural. The bottle does not look like milk. And better yet, I went to the Rockefeller